Good to see all of you here this morning. Let's grab a seat and take our songbook, if you will, and turn to page number 229. Page number 229, Since I Have Been Redeemed. And now that we got everybody all seated, let's all stand as we sing this morning. Page number 229, lift it up as we sing. I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Oh, my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. I will glory in His name since I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's love. I have Christ that satisfies since I have been redeemed. To do His will my highest price since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Savior's name. I have a witness bright and clear since I have been redeemed. This very heavy and fear since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. On the last, I have a hope prepared for me. Since I have been redeemed, since I. Well, good morning. Good to have each one of you here this morning, Pastor. Let me go ahead. Okay. Let's bow our heads for prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your great love. And Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to gather together, Lord, as your children. Lord, to fellowship, to joy with each other. And Father, just to glorify you in the things that we do. And we just ask you now, Father, that you would bless this service. Lord, bless the pastor as he comes to speak this morning. And Lord, fill him with your spirit, Father. And may the word of God go forth with power. And Father, thank you so much for each and every one that has came today. And I pray that a special blessing would go out to each one and that you would be lifted up and glorified. And Father, when we leave here today, we would say oh, what a glory it was to be in the house of God. We just thank you so much for the opportunities. Give you all the praise for what you do this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Page number 410, Faith is the Victory. Page number 410, Faith is the Victory. <laughs> Soldiers rise and press the half repairs at night, shall veil the glowing skies against the growing veil. We know that all our strength be heard. Faith is a victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is a victory. Our sword, the word of God, we tread the road, the saints of God, with 
shouts of triumph drop. I think that I can wear a wind's breath swept up on every hill. The faith we bridge the Good to have each of you in the Lord's house with us, uh, church members, visitors, guests. I'm just so glad that you've come to be with us here. As far as announcements goes for the, for the coming week, this will be the last week that we're going to be taking donations for the Compassion Pregnancy downtown. We try to do this once a fall, during the fall. And um, so just to, to help them out, in the, the, the ministry that they're doing. We, we like their um, the way they're helping young mothers out and their stand uh, against abortion. And so we just want to show our support to our community in that way. So if you have some diapers or, or onesies or some wipes or something that could be of use to them as they uh, help the mo mothers out, um, then uh, bring that and we'll give that to the Compassion Pregnancy this week. We do um, spoke of it in Sunday, Sunday school hour this morning, but we're going to do a little something for, for Halloween this year. Um, I know that sounds a little funny, but we're going to try to get together the Wednesday before, have some packaged foods and put them in a, a Ziploc bag with a tract and a, uh, uh, maybe a New Testament or something and pass them out maybe from four to six on Saturday, Halloween, and just try to be an outreach to the community here in that way. Next Sunday, the 25th, we're gonna have missionary here with us that uh, had to come home from the field, um, the, the trolls. Uh, they, we do not support them as missionaries, but they're personal friends of our family. And so uh, I'm sure you'll be blessed by them and their ministry um, very I don't think I've ever met a a man a family that is so excited about doing the Lord's work and so uh, come prepared to be blessed by that this evening uh, at five o'clock anybody who's willing to come a little early and do some singing we're going to have uh, a little singing for about a half an hour from 5 till 5.30. At 5.30, we're going to have our regular uh, prayer meetings. Um, just get together and ask the Lord's blessing for the services and on our outreach. And then 6 o'clock um, will be our service as usual. So if you're able to come at 5, we're going to have some singing. And so I'm sure that will be a, a, a blessing. Brother Don, you're going to organize a prayer breakfast this Saturday, men's prayer breakfast. So men's prayer breakfast this Saturday, 
8 o'clock, October 24th. And uh, if you're able to come to that, um, that'll be this Saturday. We, uh, Brother Preston is going to start an outreach uh, evangelism training uh, on November the 7th, first Saturday of November. So uh, if you are willing to be a part of, of our church's outreach, you know, you got to be creative in this day and age. Mm -hmm. So um, that's going to start a little bit of training on that on November 7th. So that is the announcements. Ask the ushers to come this morning as we give back to the Lord in our tithes and offerings. Just um, thankful that we're able to give back and uh, worship him in this way. Do be mindful and be in prayer the lord's protection for our community i think of uh, uh, those who are suffering i know some of the farmers are down and some of their workers are down with covid just be in prayer that the lord will be uh, work throughout our community and and keep us safe uh, brother merlin will you uh, ask the lord's blessing upon the, the offering father i do thank you for your goodness to us as individuals but also as a church body lord, we just thank you that as you bless this offering for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Uh, take this opportunity, Pastor, don't mind, to introduce one of my good friends from here in Lagrange, Brother Deshaun and his wife. We, I haven't seen him. Him and I and, and his wife used to, and my wife used to go around singing and preaching and doing whatever we could do. How many years ago, Brother Deshaun? One. Huh? One. Oh, it's been longer than that. It's <laughs> been a lot longer than that. That means he don't know. But they, they are good friends of ours. I'd like for you to welcome them to the service today yeah. as, you, as they go out. So, Brother Sean, glad you came. Page number 418, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? You may remain seated as we sing this morning. Page number 418, lift it up as we sing. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to overcome his love to sing his name? Whilst I be carried to the sky on fiery beds of ease, while others fall to Page 375, Work for the Night is Coming. Page number 375, Work for the Night is Coming. Work for the Night is Coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew Sparkling work with springing clouds, work when the days grow brighter. 
Preston, thank you ladies. Appreciate your playing for us. Where would we be without it? Reading in Isaiah this uh, week, or was it last week? I forget which. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. And um, the Lord just led me uh, over to 2 Corinthians to passage on comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, if you will. Peace from God, the God of all comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we are going to read the first 10 verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation." And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we assemble here together to hear from Thee, and we thank Thee that we have Thy Word, Thy pure Word preserved for us. Thy Word is truth. Lord, I pray that You would be with us, that You would be glorified in this time. May we lay aside uh, our thoughts that we have, our concerns, and at this few minutes that we take, have it only set aside for Thee. 
Lord, we need you this morning. Lord, our country needs thee. I pray that you pray for our country. I pray for the preservation. I pray for those who oppose themselves. Lord, I pray for this community. I think of uh, many who are infected with this virus. Lord, I pray for the farmers who are trying to get their crops in. I pray uh, for um, many others who have been affected in, in many ways. Lord, I pray for our nursing homes. I pray now, Lord, as we bow before thee, that you would touch our hearts in only a way that you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of all comfort. You know, two artists were asked to paint their vision of peace. And one artist uh, painted a placid lake uh, backing a forested mountain unmarred by human habitation, occupation. It had snow caps and, and it was just a beautiful scene, all perfectly mirrored against a calm lake, giving it a perfect reflection. It had the blue sky and the clouds floating across the stillness of the crystal clear water. The other painted a mountainside as well. But it was in the middle of a storm and uh, the dark and lowering clouds pelted down torrents of rain and, and, and hail and, and the wind came down whipping around through the trees as if it would turn them inside out. And yet in the middle of the painting there was nestled in the cleft of a rock a little bird. Nestled in her cozy nest with her, her head turned around, tucked into her uh, wing, fast asleep in peace. Which one speaks of peace to you? At some time or other, you and I in our lives will be in both situations. In one... We have a natural set of circumstances that are peaceful that we stumble upon. And that's wonderful when we go through those times in our lives, but we will go through storms. The other one speaks of a state of mind that is stable because of a proper preparation. A proper preparation. You know, there are times in our lives when we're happy and things are going well. And God gives us those times of relaxation. But he gives us those times so that we can prepare for the storms that are coming. Amen. You know, in, in a time of peace, it is not the time for, the, for, for us to um, dissolve the army. No, it is time for the army to get prepared. In a time of uh, calm, it is a time to build a shelter. It's not a time to uh, sunbathe. <laughs> In the refreshing days of spring and early summer, a, a farmer how, uh, harrows and, and plants his crop. It's not the time to relax and go on vacation. I think it was President Kennedy that is credited with the saying, the time to fix the roof is when the sun is shining. You know, everyone is born onto this earth has sought for personal peace and comfort in his own way. Every one of us has looked for comfort for our souls, but the problem is that most people look in the wrong places, they look in the wrong way, and they look for the wrong reason. Most of us are looking for peace and comfort like the first artist painted it. Something we stumble upon. King Solomon, through his wisdom, brought peace to the nation of Israel during his reign. Peace like no nation had ever known. But unfortunately, King Solomon himself did not find personal peace. He didn't find it. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 tells us of the things that 
I mean, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 starts out, vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 tells us of all the things that, that he went after to find peace and to find happiness and comfort in his life. It says he, he tried wine. He tried possessions. He tried farms and orchards and lands. And, and uh, he tried huge enterprise with business with thousands and thousands of servants. He, he tried entertainment. He tried feasting. He tried uh, many wives, many marriages. He pursued after studies and, and probably had more degrees behind his name than any other person to walk this earth. And when he got all done with all of that, he said, And hey, whatsoever mine eyes desired, I cut not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. This was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works of my hand, my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no prophet under the sun. This is a sad end for one of the wisest men on earth to get to the end of life, maybe 60 years old, and say these things. But I tell you what, we're seeing these things today. Everywhere we look, there is no new thing under the sun. Some people are looking for comfort and peace in substances. Whether it be a bottle or whether it be uh, some sort of drink or whether it be drugs, they're trying to calm a troubled soul only to find that that comfort that they're finding is short-lived. It is so ephemeral. And, and the misery of addiction is a much worse taskmaster. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. The Spirit is the comforter. Many people are seeking for comfort in a person. Clinging to a friend. Maybe clinging to a spouse. Only to find themselves disillusioned and disappointed. You know, in a marriage, to some degree, we should find comfort. That's true. We are there for each other, and if the one fall, the other is there to lift him up. But it is not my wife's job to make me happy. And if I look at, at, at her, her position in our marriage as if she, it's her job to make me happy, then, then, then I am putting my confidence and my comfort in the wrong person, the wrong thing. And if I am distraught, it is not her fault. Many go from one relationship to another relationship looking for comfort in the wrong way. King Solomon said, One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have, I not, have not I found. Why? Because he was looking for comfort in the wrong person, in the wrong way. Place. Many seek for uh, peace of mind in possessions and pleasure. You know, I'll be all set once I get my house paid off. Once I get my car paid off, everything will be fine. I'll have that pressure released. Once you get there, it's this. If I could just get that cottage, I'd be all set. It keeps on going. Once I make a million dollars, I'll be all set. We put our comfort and our security in the wrong thing. You know, if riches and possessions solved our problems, we wouldn't see suicides among the rich. We wouldn't see suicide among the, the celebrities. And yet, many millionaire and many billionaires even come to a point where they don't know where to turn anymore. And they turn to suicide. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. You know, I think I'm going to take time to turn there. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. We have Jesus' parable of the two foundations. Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. You know, naturally speaking, we often look at this uh, parable, at this, with Jesus speaking of the two foundations, we look at this fool as if he is somebody that does stupid stuff. We look at the fool as if he is, he is one who is careless with his life, careless with his money. But the Bible says that a fool is somebody who simply leaves God out. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That is a fool in the Bible. And uh, there are plenty of fools who are very successful businessmen. There are plenty of fools who are very wise with their money, very worldly wise and very successful in this life. But just leave God out. You know, an interesting fact, travel along the coastline where you find the white sandy beaches. And uh, there are plenty of people who claim to believe in the science of climate change. You know, climate change says our, our, uh, our, our tides and, and shorelines are going to rise five feet in the next 30 years. And yet these who say they believe in climate change are building their multi-million dollar mansions a hundred feet from the shoreline. These are the fools that Jesus is talking about. Not because they built beautiful houses, but because they left God out and they did not take thought for eternity. They took no thought for their future. It's all about present pursuit of comforts and pleasures. I'm not here to criticize. My point is not to criticize those who own uh, homes or second homes on Myrtle Beach or in Miami. That's not my purpose. The spiritual application is here that the comfort is not found in the pleasures of this life. We have to take uh, thought for the things of the next life. A comfort is found in knowing that your life is founded upon the solid rock, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's nothing left to fear. One pastor was asked, do you fear crossing the river of death? And he replied, why should I fear? My father owns the property on both sides. Is he your father? Is he your father? We could go on. People are looking for comfort and security and popularity and prestige. If I, only I could get a thousand likes... Then my, my people will, will, would uh, think I was important. If only I could be heard or seen, I would be fulfilled. People are looking for comfort in distractions and entertainment. Uh, all of these things going on bothering my mind. I guess my music isn't loud enough. I guess I need to go watch, binge watch some more movies or something clutter up that already cluttered mind. I need to go to another party and forget my troubles. People are looking for comfort and peace in counsel. I'll be okay if I can just make it to my next therapy session. You know, there's a time and a place for counsel. And I'm not knocking counselors. Thank God that we have counselors. But if the counselor is the foundation of your comfort, you've got your, 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 your sights aimed in the wrong spot. People are looking for comfort in astrology and dark scientists and, 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 and tarot cards and fortune tellers and palm readers. They're actually searching for a comfort and it's not to be found there. Many times people will go from one thing to another. One day it's yoga, the next day that didn't work so we're on to meditation and that didn't work so we're on to uh, some other thing. Uh, aromatherapy for my anxiety or, or changing my diet. Hey, there's nothing wrong with changing your diet a little bit, but that's not going to bring you inner peace. 
The Apostle Paul, who went through more trouble and persecution than you and I will ever do, three shipwrecks along with some many beatings, a stoning, an imprisonment, many imprisonments, he tells us of a time here in first, or 2 Corinthians. Let me turn back there. He tells us of a time here in 2 Corinthians when uh, he was overcome. Come on. I've got butterfingers here. He was overcome and uh, with exceeding much trouble insomuch that they, they thought he would die. They thought that they would die. Verse 8 through 10. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth Amen. the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us. They didn't look to any of these things for their peace that we've been talking about. They didn't look to uh, these things to escape their tri uh, tribulations. They looked to God himself. The only person that uh, can give lasting peace. You know, you and I will come to an event or a time or a, even a life period where we will go through what we could call Job's trial. A real time of testing, a real time of discouragement. Now, we probably won't go through what Job went through. Um, but we will go through trouble. We will go through a storm. Amen. And we need to decide how we're going to deal with it. Many people will tell you, many well-meaning people will tell you, God will not lay upon you any burden you're not able to bear. God will not give you a mountain that you can't climb. Don't believe a word of it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. Because he needs you to depend on him. We, we, we can't do it in our own strength. The Apostle Paul said that, that, that he came to the, spot, the point that he thought he was going to die. So he had to turn to the Lord. And when we do, they that wait upon the, the Lord shall renew their strength. Then we can mount up as eagles on eagles' wings and go over, uh, not in our own strength, but in the strength of God. Mark chapter 4 tells of a time when the disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee. And it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he, being Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Most of these men in this ship were fishermen. They had faced... A few storms. They had been on the Sea of Galilee since they were kids, probably. They had seen everything that the Sea of Galilee could kick at them, but this storm was different, worse than they had ever experienced. I personally believe that it was a, a devilish attack. The devil waited until Jesus was asleep and he swooped down and, and, and tried to. Uh, Sink the ship. Why do I think that? Because when Jesus arose, he rebuked the wind. But the disciples, you know, they were okay when Jesus went to sleep. They waited until the last minute when they thought they were going to perish. And they rushed into Jesus and said, This is more than we can handle. Carest thou not that we perish? Where are you going for comfort and rest this morning? What is it that you are pursuing 
when you're having an anxiety, when you are, when you are disturbed, when you are worried, where are you, where are you going? When you are desperate, Jesus said, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart." The disciples had Jesus in the boat all along, and yet they waited until they thought they were going to die. Why do we wait so long? We have Jesus in our hearts, and yet those of us who are saved and have called upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet we go it on our own. The disciples had Jesus in the boat. Why did they struggle in the flesh? when the answer to their problems was right there, just a prayer away. And when they called upon him, he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. A great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let me tell you something, folks. Fear and faith can't live side by side. They cannot cohabit. If fear is ruling my heart, then faith gets kicked out. If faith is dominant, there's no room for fear. Getting back to 1 Corinthians here, our time is getting on. Where does our comfort come from? Verse number 2. Peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. There is no situation that is so bad God cannot bring comfort to your heart. Amen. All comfort. He is the God of all comfort. The only permanent solution to the unrest found in our lives, in our country, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And any attempt to solve life's problems apart from Jesus will end in failure. It will end in falling apart. And uh, apart from him, we will not find rest for our souls. When God created man, he put within us a void that could only be filled by the Spirit of God, the Comforter. And when we go here and there looking for that which will not satisfy, we will end up empty. Cannot live on this earth consumed with temporal concerns and ignore eternal concerns, eternal destiny. We read in the Gospels of Jesus' call, uh, Jesus calls us to come unto him and abide with him. He wants to be our savior. He wants us to allow him to, to uh, dwell within. But we need to call upon him. And first of all, he is the God of all comfort. Amen. How does he comfort? We have to call upon him. We have to ask for it. We have to desire it. Hey, the apostle Paul told the Philippian jailer, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Folks, it's the same today. It hasn't changed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse number 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. If you're going for peace in the world, you're not going to find God's peace. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He pinpoints where the problem is, the heart. It's not all the circumstances. It's not the storm around. It's the heart. Jesus, Jesus didn't tell the disciples, why didn't you control the circumstances? Why didn't you bail out this boat? He said, why are you so afraid? Why don't you have faith? What's the peace that the world giveth? Jesus doesn't give the peace the world giveth. It's temporary. Every drink wears off and leaves us worse than before. 
Every thousand dollar bonus leaves us only looking for the next one. Every counseling session needs a follow-up appointment. All the world can offer is temporary at best. Jesus Christ is the God of all comfort and the comfort of all. There's no disturbance that when given over to Christ, he cannot calm. We just read of the disciples on the Sea of Galilee, seasoned fishermen that couldn't handle the storm. John chapter 8, the rulers brought a woman before Jesus who had already been convicted of adultery. It was an impossible situation, one that she could not wiggle her way out of. They already had stones in their hand, and Jesus said one thing, and the storm was calm, so to speak. He said, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone. One by one, starting with the eldest, they walked away. Within a few moments, when given to Jesus, this woman who was convicted of certain death walked away forgiven with comfort in her heart. If you were at uh, Mark chapter 4, where we read of the, um, the, the storm on the Sea of Galilee, just the next verse, chapter 5, Mark chapter 5 uh, there is no sin too big uh, that God cannot forgive. We read here um, that there is a, a, a man that we call the maniac of Gadara who had a troubled soul. He was distressed. He was disturbed. He had allowed so many vices in his life that the devils just came in and lived within him and didn't bother leaving. Fact is, he was controlled by so many that we're told when Jesus drove them out, they had no trouble disturbing 2,000 swine. That's how many were living within this man. He lived in the tombs. He cut himself and cried night and day. And in just a few words from Jesus, come out of the man. This man found lasting comfort. There is no troubled soul so troubled that Jesus cannot give comfort. It's no wonder that Isaiah said of him, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Who can, who can find comfort? Secondly, who can find comfort? All. He is the God of all comfort and the comforter of all. Whosoever, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's offer goes out to all, whosoever. You know, our problem is that instead of going to the God of all comfort, we end up blaming the God of all comfort. Why am I in this situation? Why am I going through this trouble? Why am I going through this storm? Why am I even here if God is in control? The problem is not God's fault, folks. The problem started with sin. There were no problems in the Garden of Eden until Adam and Eve chose to sin. That's when problems started in this world. Also, most of our anxiety is pointless and unrealistic. And if we were simply committed to the Lord and leave it there, we would find rest. Probably 95% of what we worry about doesn't even come to pass. It's all in our mind, which is why the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your circumstances, your hearts and minds. Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. Peace happens in our heart and mind, not in the outward circumstances. Jesus is the only one who can change the heart. Number three, and lastly, here in our last few moments, what are we to do when we have found comfort? What are we to do when we finally have found the comforter, Jesus Christ? 
pass it on. Verse number four, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. There is no one on this earth who has the power to comfort you and me like somebody else who has been through it and come out victorious. There's nobody who can come alongside and give advice like somebody who's been there and gotten the victory and maybe a little scolding if you need it. It never ceases to amaze me when people get comfort and get help from people who have utterly failed. Why are you going there? Why? Well, let me tell you why they do. Because they're not looking for help. They're looking for an excuse to continue in this rotten path that they're living. Back a couple months ago, I think I mentioned this one other time, but we were getting updates about how uh, Kelly Clarkson was uh, leaning heavily on Blake Shelton as he, she was going through her divorce. What in the world did she go to Blake Shelton for? He's the epitome uh, of somebody who knows how to ruin a marriage. You don't get help when you're stuck from somebody who's deeper in the mud than you are. Go to somebody who's been through the trials of marriage and come out victorious and, and more in love than they ever were before. There is no one more worthy to comfort than the Lord Jesus Christ. Read Isaiah chapter 53. Amen. He's despised and rejected. He bore our griefs. He, he carried our sorrows. He was wounded. He was bruised. He was chastised. The Lord went through it all and finally gave his life on the cross. When he was just in the... Uh, Ideal stage of life, 33 years old, in the prime of his life for you and me. And he finished the work of redemption. If there was ever one who could give comfort in, a in our times of trial and storm, it is Jesus Christ. Amen. Been through way more than anyone else who ever walked this, this uh, earth. And through his strength, we find strength to carry on. And in turn, we can help others. You know, God doesn't intend for us to soak up his blessings. God doesn't intend for us to soak up his, his strength and his comfort just to lie there dormant. He wants us then to let our, our, his light shine through us. And let our lives be a comfort to others because of what he did for us. Do you have that peace today? Do you have that peace? God doesn't intend for us to just allow it to lie dormant. We're to share it with others. We're to share the story of salvation. Uh, it says over and over again here, salvation and consolation. Two things the world needs to hear. We need to go. Interesting that uh, when the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 is describing the armor of God. He gets down to verse number 15 and he says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hey, we're supposed to be soldiers. We're supposed to strap on those sandals and we're supposed to go. But it's not to start a fight. It's to spread peace. The gospel of peace. Do you have peace this morning? Our time is gone. But he's the God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort. We can have it if we'll stop doing it our way and go to him. If you're not saved this morning, if you've never called upon the Lord Jesus Christ unto salvation, that's where it starts. That's where it starts, this Comfort this peace. Fill our heart. That's where it starts. As Brother Preston comes 
right after the prayer. Um, pardon me, I'm sorry. You can come, that's fine. I just asked you to stop and consider. As we take time to, to, to sing in a closing song and, and meditate, if this is not a decision that you've made, make that peace this morning. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, your, the comfort of your scripture, the comfort of your word. Jesus Christ in print, he is the word. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us here not to go away without the God of all comfort in our lives. Pray that you would speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.